live from New Orleans, Louisiana, it's the Cube covering .next Conference 2018. Brought to you by Nutanix. Welcome back. I'm Stu Miniman, joined by Keith Townsend, and we're here at Nutanix.next 2018. Happy to welcome back to the program, Finney Gill, who's the CTO of Cloud Services at Nutanix, and welcome a first-time guest, uh, long-time caller, uh, you know, long-time watcher, first-time caller, uh, Vijay uh, Rayapati, who's the general manager of Nutanix Beam, a brand new service and acts, uh, came from the Minjar acquisition. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. Uh, great. Uh, yeah, Vijay, what, so for, for those that don't know, bring us back a little bit, you know, Minjar, tell us a little bit about the company, how many people, and then we'll get into the integration and the launch. Yeah, uh, so we started Minjar in 2012, late 2012, primarily focused on you know, building a public cloud optimization service. So our flagship product is Botmetric, uh, which is one of the highest rated and reviewed solution in AWS Marketplace. Uh, we are primarily based in Bangalore, uh, and focused on you know, helping customers as they're moving to this public cloud journey, how can you help them deliver governance across their consumption uh, from a cost perspective and compliance you know, from a security perspective. Right? That's what we were focused on and we joined Nutanix last quarter uh, you know, and really excited to be here and look forward to continue you know, building on it. All right, Benny, maybe you can help us connect the dots. So, mm -hmm. look at Xi, look at uh, the, the services that Nutanix is building. Usually it starts with your infrastructure. Yep. Well, it's not, not where Minjar you know, came from, so help us connect the dots as to how, what led to the acquisition, how it expands the portfolio, and led yeah. to your first SaaS product. Yeah. I mean, if you look at what we are uh, talking about as our true north, what we are doing is we're building a hybrid cloud. You know, we, we started with building a private cloud and customers asking us, hey, solve the public cloud problem for us, hybrid cloud, multi-cloud, and most of the enterprises today are dispersed, right? So when we talk about enterprise cloud, what we mean is this dispersed cloud, including IoT devices, you'll see some of that uh, in, in, in the demo uh, this evening. So, the first question that comes to mind is, okay, how am I going to manage all my dispersed cloud entities? And not all of them are owned by Nutanix. So when we looked at uh, Minjar and the capabilities, it was right on target. They are helping customers consume the cloud and solve the two problems that they have, that they lose sleep on. One is, do I have control on cost? And the other is, do I have control on security compliance? So that's a good, capability to have, and with Vijay's team's help, we're going to expand it to all the clouds, including Nutanix and beyond, and provide it to all our customers. So today, where is the service? How do I consume it? Help, help me understand that. Uh, so this is the first SaaS service that Nutanix has launched. Uh, you know, it can be consumed from beam.nutanix.com, and uh, we intend to continue on the service uh, in future as a SaaS offering. Uh, you know, for customers, both Nutanix customer and not Nutanix customers. What we have today is we support Amazon Cloud and Azure, and we are working on bringing integration for Nutanix, and then we'll bring support for other cloud providers as well. Yeah, so, I'm sorry, just how, how many customers did you have running on the Botmetric service in the uh, past? We have a couple of hundred customers uh, using Botmetric. We track close to about a billion dollar plus in public cloud consumption through Botmetric uh, before it became Nutanix and uh, you know, yeah. So Vijay, help, help us understand the larger industry in the, this larger space. It's been relatively a crowded space for some time. There's been a lot of solutions that helped with cloud security, performance, monitoring, et cetera. What was the unique gap or value opportunity you saw at Botmetric? Yeah, I mean, there are two uh, unique things that we found you know, when we worked with this public cloud customers. The challenge is, uh, there were a lot of tools which were providing visibility, right? But there weren't many tools providing uh, you know, ability to remediate those things that you detect, right? right. Uh, essentially, from day one, when we built Botmetric Platform, we built it like an action-oriented platform, so you not only get visibility, you can essentially automate you know, uh, those issues, uh, you know, either for an optimization or for control through our automation engine. So there is a lot of invisible automation in uh, Nutanix Beam, 
versus just being you know, this beautiful UI, you know, which can give you a lot of insights and reports. Uh, and uh, that's a big differentiator. That's one of the reasons why you know, um, a lot of customers, when they write reviews about the product, they say, man, I really love it because it not only tells me what I need to do, I don't need to go and do those 100 things as an engineer, mm. uh, and I can rather click to fix or deploy an automation that can go and do these things, right? And one of the other things uh, that uh, was very interesting in what Beam does is it also can predict what the cost is going to be yeah. at the end of the month. Instead of being surprised by the end of the month <laughs> bill, you know for you know uh, how it is today, and how the system is predicting it. So that gives you more control on making sure that if there's a, a over expenditure that's going to happen, you can take actions today. So what type of automation and adjustments can Beam make on my behalf? Yeah, I think uh, pretty much uh, anything that a cloud ops or a DevOps engineer do. What we don't do is we don't do any provisioning or orchestration, right? Even as a bot metric, we never did that. What we were focused on is how can we solve operational issues on a day-to-day -day basis, whether they're related to cost, or they're related to compliance, or they're related to automation. So it can detect things, uh, you, can, you can do custom scaling from Beam, you can do uh, you know, uh, uh, resizing of things, you can clean up unused resources, you can go and run custom audits using Python on Beam. So there are like a lot of things that a day two or a day three on a continuous basis as a cloud ops or a DevOps engineer that you need to do, that's what we deliver as a invisible automation or we call it event-driven automation, right? When certain events happen, you know, how can we automate those things or write ones use you know, multiple times? Yeah. Benny, can, can you walk us through what, what kind of Nutanix stamp has been put on the product leading to the, the, the Beam Maybe give us a little bit of your philosophy as to yeah. you know, how, how the software acquisitions, what they have to go through before they you know, be, become really yeah, Nutanix I mean, products. First of all, any acquisition, we want to make sure um, that the team is a great team. That's people are the most important. From a technology perspective, they need to be solving the pain points of the customers. Um, now, when we integrate any uh, service into our cloud platform, we focus on three things. Uh, one is identity. So when a customer logs in to our Zycloud services or logs in on-prem, they should be able to use a single sign-on across all the, all the services. Second thing is billing. We want to make sure that how we bill the customer, it's not like separate bills that come and they have to put them together, it has to be single uh, billing. Also in terms of how you spend, uh, we're working on programs where you can buy some Nutanix currency, coins, and then you can use it either in the private cloud or in the public cloud, but the decision could be a late binding decision, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and, and finally, it's about making sure that the one-click simplicity that we keep talking about and delivering is there, right? And uh, we've been lucky that with the Beam product, a lot of it is already there, it's, that's why it's already GA. But we make sure that it goes through the same rigor of uh, making sure that the user experience is awesome. So let's talk about that time to integration, I'll, I'll mm -hmm. call it. The ability for you guys to take Beam, which is, uh, or Botmetrics at the time, a completely separate product oh, yeah. from Calm, Xi, and then you take uh, that, turn it into Beam, a SaaS product, yeah. which is your first SaaS product, how do you keep that consistent view across the entire Nutanix portfolio experience so that administrators are not leaving one tool to go into another one, no, no. which a SaaS offering is very <laughs> different than what you guys have offered in the past. Correct. So we're working on that, um, both on-premises view and in the cloud view. So, as you might have noticed, when we came up with Xi, we said it's Xi Cloud Services, and DR is the first service. Because when you log into Xi, you're logging into all of the cloud services, and then, the menu of services will show up, and Beam is one, DR is one, and more will come in. So we've already thought through that. On-premises, if you've noticed in our history, we had Prism Central, and then we um, announced Calm support, and it's baked into Prism. It's not a separate tool. We took one and a half years to make sure that it does not look like a schizophrenic you know, set of products. Uh, when we announced Flow, if you look at you know, other vendors like VMware, they have separate NSX manager, NSX controllers. In our case, it's the same Prism Central. Once you upgrade, you get that feature. So that's in our discipline. In anything we do, we take the time and make sure 
Um, it's going to be a single experience for the customer. Um, we're doing the same thing, so Widget's team is quite you know, rapid and agile in doing stuff. Uh, they've integrated with our single identity system, integrating with a single billing system. Um, so that has happened rapidly with this case. I think uh, we focus a lot, I mean at least at Nutanix, you know, when I joined, right, uh, there is a lot of emphasis on experience, right? How do we make sure we deliver a consistent experience for the user from an identity perspective, from a service usage perspective, as well as from a support perspective, right? I know this, it's a common support, uh, it's a common identity, and it's a common billing. And uh, you rightly touched upon, right, as we are innovating on a lot of these services, you know, there is a lot of thinking going on saying, you know, how do we bring a common experience, unified experience that is seamless, you know, rather than you know having different endpoints, you know, people need to you know go and you know try to remember these things. Uh, I think we'll continue to work and uh, you know innovate on that front. Uh, but uh, experience is one thing that Nutanix is really good at. Uh, you know, if you go uh, on to you know digital media and look at, you know, a lot of people are saying, "Oh man, we really like you know what we saw uh, from a user experience perspective of the product." Right. Mm -hmm. And we already took a lot of those design uh, uh, concepts uh, you know, Nutanix has uh, in terms of the UI and UX. The beam that you say today is completely consistent with our 3.0 design philosophy internally for all products. So the customer has same kind of uh, uh, you know, experience. Uh, of course, it's a SaaS service. Uh, as Bini said, we are trying to bring a lot of these SaaS services under Zy Cloud services so the user can consume it. Uh, just like they consume a GCP or an Azure or AWS, right? End of the day, you have EC2, RDS, you know, there is a common yeah. frame, you know, that brings all these yeah. things together. And one additional thing that we're doing, which has not been, you know, done before, is providing these services in a hybrid mode, yeah. right? So some of these services, like Calm and, uh, you know, our uh, infrastructure as a service capability, we've announced ERA, how do we provide it in a hybrid cloud view, a world where you can run the service on-prem, you can migrate the app that depends on the service, so the service should also be available in the cloud. And those are some of the hard problems that we are working on, uh, but we believe that we have the tools and the uh, you know, experience to make that happen. So, uh, v VJ, just one that was announced, <laughs> you got some cool new t-shirts you're going to show us. Um, what, yes. should we be, what, what, what should we be looking for uh, in, in, from the roadmap there? And yeah, show, show that yeah. t-shirt off. <laughs> so, uh, there are three, I mean like there are two primary things that we are very focused on, right? You know, one is how can we bring a lot more intelligence, not just, uh, you know, from insights and actions, uh, how can we help customers, uh, you know, make those choices of, you know, moving the workloads? Because if you see, there are a lot of components that Nutanix is building. Even today, we announced Cloud Extract, which is kind of a one-click mobility, uh, not just from cloud to Nutanix. It is going to support from Nutanix to, you know, other, uh, you know, clouds as well. Uh, because there is a strong cultural belief within the company that, you know, we need to have give customers the freedom of choice and deliver, a, you know, a good service. Uh, at the right price, uh, you know, so that, uh, you know, they feel confident, right, of, uh, you know, about what we're doing and uh, what we deliver to them. So in that context, uh, one is obviously, you know, bringing multiple clouds, uh, you know, currently we support Amazon and Azure, but we will bring, you know, GCP support and we will launch, you know, Nutanix, we will launch, you know, other providers as well, right, we won't stop just with them. And the next thing is, uh, you know, how do we make, you know, this experience a lot more seamless and we will also integrate with Calm and you know a couple of uh, you know other uh, products that we have uh, you know as we you know outlined, uh, so that customers can get visibility, of course by workloads by apps they don't need to come you know to beam, you know to consume them. So Benny, one last question. Can you, this is critically important as you bring on your first yep. SaaS offering, billing and procurement. What is the average? experience for the Nutanix customer who hadn't, you know, the infrastructure team didn't whip out a credit card and buy a NX system. What is the experience for setting up billing with uh, your SaaS services? Right, so um, a lot of it has not GA'd yet, but you know, if you look at um, some of the demos that we have done for Xi Cloud services, including DR, it's, you know, the customer can provide a credit card and you know, consume it as they are used to with the public cloud. But we're also, we also have programs where they can um, buy some credits, you know, Nutanix coins up front, 
and, and use them, both on-prem and in the cloud. So these things are in the works, um, and we are listening to our customers. Not One size does not fit all, and we know that in the enterprise, um, but we'll have multiple options for them. Excellent. Sounds just like uh, I, I, I've listened to my children saying I get the, the coins to do Fortnite <laughs> and, and things like that. The, the millennials will be good. They, they yeah. buy some credits, buy it here, buy it there, yeah. use exactly. it up. Yeah. Uh, Finny, VJ, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, congrats on the launch of the product. We look forward to keeping an eye on it as, as that grows in the portfolio oh. grows. Thank, Thank you, you, Stu. Thank you for Thank having you, me. Keith. For, for, for Keith Townsend, us. I'm Stu Miniman, back with lots more programming here at Nutanix.next 2018. Thanks for watching theCUBE.